There are some additional nuances that we'll need to discuss before we move on. The first one is nesting elements. When you place elements within other elements, this is called nesting. If we wanted to state that eels have horrible eyesight and we want the word horrible to be bold, we would wrap it within the strong element. This means the word is going to have stronger text formatting than the rest of the text within our sentence. There is really no right or wrong way to do nesting. In this example, we open the paragraph element first, and then we open the strong element. For proper nesting, we should close the strong element first before closing the paragraph tag. There is really no limit on the number of elements that you can nest. So you can have many nested elements as long as you're opening and closing them in the proper way, it's fine. When we talk about nested elements, we may refer to them as being child elements. And just remember that HTML elements need to be nested in the correct order. They must be closed in the inverse order of how they are defined. That means that the last tag opened must be closed first. I like to use the acronym PHILO, first in, last out. The next thing we need to talk about are block and inline elements. These are two important categories of elements that you need to know when you learn HTML. Block level elements form a visible block on the page. A block level element appears on a new line following the content that precedes it. Any content that follows a block level element also appears on a new line. So you can think of block level elements as forcing a hard return. Block level elements are usually structural elements on the page. For example, a block level element might be a heading, paragraph, list, navigation menu, or a footer. A block level element wouldn't be nested inside an inline element, but it might be nested inside another block level element. Inline elements are contained within block level elements and they surround only small parts of the document's content, not entire paragraphs or grouping content. An inline element will not cause a new line to appear in a document. It is typically used with text. For example, an anchor element creates a hyperlink and elements such as M or strong create emphasis of some sort. Let's look at some examples. Let's look at how we can nest elements. I'm going to take the file that we were working on before, 0205, and I'll go ahead and I'll open this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fork it, which remember forking it is like making a copy of that pen. So I'll go ahead and I'll fork it and it creates the copy. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'll name this 0206 and we'll just call it nesting and I'll save this. So I'm picking up from where I left off before. What we're going to do is we're going to add some additional nested tags so that we can adjust the formatting of what we had created earlier. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the word sea life and I'm going to make it appear italic. So to do that, I'm going to use the M tag. The M tag stands for emphasis. So I'll add the opening M tag in front of C and then after life, I'll add the closing M tag. And as you can see, once I do this, C life appears italic. The rest of the text is just going to appear normally. We'll go ahead and we'll do something similar down here in this first paragraph where we have sea turtles think jellyfish are so tasty. So tasty is going to be bold. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this inside of the strong tag. I'll open the strong tag where I want the bold formatting to start and then I'll close the strong tag. As you can see, now this bit of text is appearing bold. The rest of the text is appearing normally. It is important to mention that when I do nest tags, the strong tag, for instance, becomes a child of the paragraph tag. It is a descendant of the paragraph tag. And you'll see that I open the paragraph tag first then at some point I have my strong tag, then I close my strong tag, and then I close the paragraph tag. 
So just remember, whenever you nest tags, you just need to make sure that you have the nesting set up correctly. Tags have to open and close in the way they are inside or outside one another. I want to show you one more thing about nesting. So for this example, I'm going to create a new pen. And for this pen, we'll go ahead and we'll write a M tag. And then I'll close the M tag. So the text, this is first, is appearing italic as you would expect. Now, because the M tag is an inline tag, if I create an another M tag and I write, and this is second, and then I close the M tag, you're going to see that these appear all together on one line. It also is worth noting that this is first and appear right next to each other. And that's because no spaces exist. We need to insert a space between these elements so that the space will exist within the HTML. So it doesn't really matter where I put the space. I could put it after the word first, and then the space would populate, or we could put it in between the M tags and the space would populate, or I could put it after the second M tag before the word and, and it would populate. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and put a comma here, and then we're gonna make one more M tag and we'll write, and this is third. And as you can see, all of this exists on one line. Now let's go ahead and let's make a paragraph tag. I'll write, this is the fourth item, and then I'll put a comma, and then we'll put and, and let's use an M tag again, and then we'll write, and this is the fifth one. Now I've opened the M tag within the paragraph tag, so I need to make sure that the M tag closes before I close the paragraph tag. You can see once we do this, this is the fourth item and this is the fifth one appear on their own line. That's because the paragraph tag is a block level element. The M tag is one of those inline elements, so it does not force a line return. You can see that the first example that we wrote, all of the elements sit on the same line and they have no spacing between each other. That's because they're all inline elements, so they're going to appear side by side. Our second example, though, where we have the paragraph that then contains a descendant element that is an M tag, that's going to appear on its own line. And the reason is, is because the paragraph is a block level element. So this is an example of the difference between using those inline and block level elements. I'll go ahead and I'll save this pen as 0206 and we'll call it inline-block. Here's an example of some of the block level elements that you'll likely be using as you develop websites. We'll dive deeper into these block level elements and discuss what they do, but you're already familiar with the H1 through H6 elements along with the paragraph elements. Here's a list of some inline elements. This list is not an exhaustive list, but it does contain most of the more commonly used elements. I have gone ahead and made the inline elements that you'll come across most likely bold so that you can start to think more concretely about these and identify them within your code. The final thing that we're gonna be talking about right now are empty elements. Not all elements follow the pattern of having an opening tag, content, and then a closing tag. Some elements consist of a single tag only. These are typically used to insert or embed something within the document. An example of this would be an image tag. This element embeds an image file onto the page. Notice that there is no closing tag. When we write empty elements, we usually self-close the elements. So before the closing angle bracket, we'll put a space, then a forward slash, and then have the closing angle bracket. There are a handful of these empty element tags. Here, I'm giving you an example of the image tag along with the BR tag, which forces a soft return or a line break. Here's a list of some of the empty elements that you'll commonly see. 
And once again, I've highlighted the ones in bold that you'll be using more often than not. Since this is such a short list, you'll probably just need to ultimately memorize the empty elements that you'll be using most often. Whenever you write empty elements, you're going to go ahead and write them and then self close them. Let me show you what this looks like in our code pen. Here within this paragraph that says this is the fourth item and this is the fifth one. Let's say that I wanted to put and this is the fifth one on its own line, but I didn't want to force a hard return or double spacing. In order to do this, I could insert a line break. So this would be a BR tag. We open the angle bracket, we type a BR, then we put a space forward slash and we close the angle bracket. This is an example of an empty tag. And you can see when we do this, it forces the line to just make a soft return and appear one line down. Empty elements are sometimes referred to as void elements. Most of the time in HTML, an element is going to surround or hug some sort of content. You can see my paragraph tag is hugging all of this content. The M tag is hugging this content. The BR tag, however, has no content that it surrounds or hugs, and therefore it's going to be an empty element. I hope that this has clarified some of the nuances of HTML. We have covered nesting, inline versus block, and empty elements.